How much would you pay for a Michelin star dining experience like this? Having increasingly loved food and trying new things in my adult life, I've also occasionally enjoyed quote unquote fancy food or fine dining, but I've never actually visited a coveted Michelin star restaurant until now. With a trip to Paris, I knew this would be a great opportunity, so I went looking for different restaurants, and the first one I could score reservations for was called Le Meris. So on my first night of arriving in Paris, I put my suit on and then sat down to enjoy their five course tasting menu. This also comes with cheeses and desserts and different dishes in between, but I'm just going to talk through everything I ate and the experience that I had. I honestly don't remember what everything was called or what every dish was, but I'll do my best. By the way, the vibes here were just immaculate. So before the first course, they warmed up my palate with a few little dishes. This was a bowl of refreshing green stuff that I forgot what it was. Some fried chicken feet, which was cool. And two of these one bite tart looking things. They had a little crust on the bottom. One of them had caviar and egg yolk on top. And the other one, I can't remember what it was. But all of this was light and refreshing like you'd want before eating. The fried chicken feet was something cool that I've never tried before. Nice and crispy texture and a lot of flavor. Of course, I loved the one bites, especially the caviar one. Tasted great amazing way to get ready to eat some fancy food but also before my first course they brought out some butter and my choice of bread and i started with a baguette i also got to add on my own salt and pepper which was amazing of course you already know nothing like a good french baguette but that softened salted butter on top was amazing and i loved every bite of this and then jk this is still not the first course this is just an oyster to get me ready again it had some kind of acidic lime ice on top of it and it was flavored some type of way that just made it really refreshing Living in New Orleans, I already love oysters, but this was a different experience entirely. But now the actual first course was lightly cooked sea bream, came with some fennel, horseradish, and smoked yogurt, served on this really cool gigantic ice pillow that I've never seen before. My biggest takeaway from this dish was the freshness of it and the discipline to not overseason it. The fish was just allowed to taste as pure as it is, only really accompanied by flavors that actually complement it, but just tasting pure and refreshing. But not being a huge fish guy, I'll give this one a 7.5 out of 10 for starters. The next course was also a starter, which was a warm guinea fowl and foie gras pâté, served with a bitter salad. Guinea fowl is obviously something else that I've never tried before, and they served it in this kind of Wellington-style pastry. It came out tasting kind of like a good roasted turkey for Thanksgiving, like dark poultry meat vibes, and I love the crispy flaky pastry around it. The sauce was kind of acidic and bitter with the salad as well. It all complemented the richness of the bird. I also love the foie gras, it was my first time trying it. Another salad plate, and I was starting to get full. I'll go ahead and give this one a 7.7 .7 out of 10. I also made massive mistakes by continuing to eat bread and then them bringing me more bread. I should have tried to paste that throughout the dinner, but I have a bad habit of eating everything that's in front me. They gave me some rye bread and focaccia as well throughout my meal. Both amazing but super filling which was a bad idea as you'll see. The second two courses were kind of leveled up starters in preparation for the main dish. First I went with the crispy blue lobster which was served with a fruit medley. That was some beetroot, red berry, pepper, and amaranth. The lobster was kind of tempura encrusted served with some really rich sauce. I mean lobster is always great and I'm used to it being drowned in butter but this one wasn't and that wasn't a bad thing. Keeping along with the rest of the dishes so far it was allowed to be pure and taste like what it tastes like. These chefs do a good job of not interfering with the flavors that are supposed to come out of really good food. Super tender and yummy. But if I'm being honest this little fruit salad on the side was really good. It was both sweet and sour, a lot of flavor inside. I'm not sure what they did to create this, but it's unlike anything I'd ever tasted before. Some of the best bites of the whole night, honestly. I'm giving this course a 9.3 out of 10. Super enjoyable. And for my last of the starters, I chose a steamed John Dory with white asparagus, barnacle, and coriander. And yeah, it does sound like something that comes from Spongebob. It's a really beautifully plated dish, and it tasted really good too. I preferred this John Dory fish over the sea bream that I started with. It was more of the flaky fish that I'm used to eating, and I like the creamier sauce that accompanied this as opposed to the acidic one that accompanied the first one. White asparagus just tastes like asparagus in my opinion, but really good. The sauce on this one was well seasoned and super rich. I was getting pretty full, but I really enjoyed all my starters. This last one I'm going to give an 8.3 out of 10. They gave me another palate cleanser here, which was some kind of clamshell with fruits inside. It's meant to be eaten in one bite to get the full flavor experience. Again, the acidity from the fruit and everything was just so refreshing. These little bites in between were super welcome and they did their job well. Now onto the main course, which per the server's recommendation, I chose the grilled silk grain veal with Celtus, olive, and mint. I'm a sucker for good beef and I'm sure trying it at a fancy restaurant is not going to disappoint. This one might win the award for the best plating of the night. And yeah, digging into the veal, I really did enjoy it, especially with the sauce it was served with. I honestly wouldn't say it would beat some of the homemade ribeye steaks that I've had before, but I think that's kind of comparing apples to oranges because this is something different entirely. 
Again, what does ring true as has been going on the whole night is the freshness and the pureness of each dish. There's not a lot of interfering flavors and everything meshes really well together. This was super tender as veal usually is and I did enjoy this a lot. But if I'm going to be able to continue, I'm going to need to eat really good tasting food to keep up with my fullness. I'll give the main course an 8.7 out of 10. Next, they gave me some type of refreshing broth that was sucked up into these herbs and aromatics. Another way to cleanse the palate, it looked pretty cool and it tasted pretty refreshing. Before finishing with dessert, it was time for some famous French cheeses. First, they came out with this little sampler of different types. I could not tell you what these were, but these were all super salty and super funky. These were not enough for me to overcome my fullness factor, and I knew I had more coming, so I elected not to finish these. They were good, but they were kind of strong as well, so I was just being careful. Especially because they were then going to bring me the real cheeses after the fact. I got to choose as many cheeses as I wanted from this glass serving container. I really didn't want any more cheese at this point, but I didn't want to offend them, so I chose three. He told me the names, but I don't remember what they were, I just chose what they pointed out. I do remember the last one was blue cheese though. The first one was really smooth and creamy and I really enjoyed the texture and flavor of this one. The second one was super funky and super strong and it really reminded me of the flavor of Brussels sprouts. Not necessarily in a bad way, but it was really strong. And the blue cheese tasted like blue cheese, kind of burns your tongue a little bit, but definitely strong as well. These were all good, but maybe a little too fancy for me, and I was definitely full at this point, so I elected not to finish these either. I hope they weren't upset with me. Finally, right before dessert, they gave me one more palate cleanser. This was some kind of lemon ice bowl with some fish eggs inside. Again, that pickly, acidic flavor which we use as a palate cleanser, it worked really well. And I think it helped me with the flavor fatigue because I was eating a lot of rich stuff and this acid really brightens things up. Didn't realize at first that I was supposed to eat the whole thing and not just the eggs inside. Whoops. But finally for my dessert, I chose the frosted vanilla pod from Indonesia. I love vanilla flavor and I figured this was going to be something leveled up from what I'm used to. It was this kind of vanilla ice creamy stuff with lots of vanilla bean in the middle and it was served on some kind of crumbly base. Now I'm definitely a huge dessert person and I have a big sweet tooth and for all the flavor that I had all night, I didn't get a lot of sweetness until now. So as full as I was, this absolutely hit the spot. The cold richness and the sweetness of the cream paired with that super strong punch of this vanilla. Some of the best use of vanilla that I've had in my entire life. This was hands down my favorite dish of the night, which is saying a lot because I ate it when I was at my most full, but I'm glad I topped it off this way because it was amazing. I'm giving my dessert a 9.7 out of 10. They also gave me a lot of goodies to leave with, lots of different kinds of chocolate, some flaky salt that I can use at home and I definitely will, and the whole thing lasted about three and a half hours, which I was eating like twice as fast as all the other tables around me, and I was the only person in the whole restaurant eating alone, so it probably would have lasted over four hours if I was with somebody or not a maniac. But it's just really nice to have an experience like this, a whole wait staff at your beck and call just waiting to assist you in any way, and then getting to eat some of the most artly crafted food in the entire world. You can tell the chef takes pride in what he does, and I got to meet him afterwards. He came around to all the tables, which was really nice. It just feels like you leave this world for a little bit and get to experience a little bit of paradise. So all that to say, it's really nice, but you do have to pay for this. And I was trying to look for cheaper restaurants when I was trying to book, but this was the first one that I could actually book that had Michelin stars. And the price tag listed on the menu was 380 euros, which after all the fees and taxes and then I tipped, it went up to 455 euros, which was exactly $500 USD. Yeah, most of you might say that's probably too much to spend on one meal or even groceries for a whole month, and I don't know, I would probably agree with you, but it's not just about the food, it's about the experience, and I was on a trip and I budgeted for this, so I was okay with it. Still felt that pretty hard when I swiped my card though, not gonna lie. But would I do something like this again? I don't know. I don't know if I'm the biggest fine dining fan in the world. I did like the experience of course, and I'm glad I could say that I went to a Michelin star restaurant. But it's definitely not something I would do frequently or often. I would definitely do it again for under like $200 or around $100. But I'll say this was worth it for me being able to experience it and then film it and share it with everybody. But what are your thoughts? Let me know below. Was this an utter waste of resources and time? Or would you like to try obscure and really well crafted foods like this? Thank you for following my journey. This was an incredible trip and this was a big highlight of it. Just figured I would talk about really nice food for a few minutes. I'll be getting back to recipes and I'll try to keep doing that on my channel for those that continue to watch. But that's it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. Be blessed and I'll see you next time. Bro, there is no way that this five-star restaurant lets you dry your hands with towels and then toss them.